Today I'm going to share with you how to bribe the police overseas. How do I know this and why might you need to know this? Well, my name is Jason Hansen. I'm a former CIA officer. Maybe you saw me on Fox News, the NBC Today Show. And the reason you need to know how to, how to do this is it can get you out of a serious jam. Please welcome back former CIA officer Jason Hansen. Former CIA Jason Hansen. This handsome fella is Jason Hansen. Okay. This is Jason Hansen, former CIA guy. When I say how to bribe the police overseas, what I specifically mean is how to bribe corrupt police. So if you're overseas, especially in Mexico, and I'll get to that in a moment, you need to know how to talk yourself out to a jam, out of a jam. So here's a real life story. I was overseas, I was, let's just say, a European country, and somebody I was with drew some unnecessary attention to ourselves. All of a sudden, I'm surrounded by a few cops, me and this other person, and last thing I wanna do is obviously end up in a, uh, a jail overseas. So what do you do? Well, there's a lot of corrupt police overseas. So they're just looking for a payday. They're just, you know, that's the way they do business. So what you don't do is you don't pull out a big wad of cash and be like, hey buddy, how do I, you know, how do I get out of this? You know, how much do you want? Don't do that. Even though they are corrupt police, they don't want it thrown in their face. So here is the magic line and exactly what I said that day. First, play the dumb American. Always play the dumb American. For me, it's not that hard. So you just say, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. You know, officer, I didn't mean to. I apologize. I'm so, so sorry. Then you say, I'm so, so sorry. I bet there's a fine to pay. How do I pay that fine? And my specific instance where I had to use this, the officer said, well, it's a $50 fine and you pay me. Of course, on my mind, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I would have paid you 10 times that amount. So I whipped out some money, gave him money in his uh, currency and was able to go. So it only cost me 50 bucks, which is obviously well worth it. So the key thing you say is, how do I pay the fine, right? That's the magic word. So it's not like saying, how do I bribe you and get out of this? Because let's say that specific police officer was not corrupt and that he was legitimate. If you say, I bet there's a fine to pay, how do I pay this fine? And he's a legitimate, honest cop. He's just gonna say, you know, you go down to the courthouse on Monday or you go to the police station on Monday and pay it. So you are not looking as you are trying to intentionally bribe them, which is a key thing. Now, don't use this here in the US. Don't do anything stupid. If you got get caught speeding, going to 80 to 65, don't try this. If you did something illegal and again, you got caught speeding or whatever it might be, you deserve what you get. So you're only using this if you were in danger, if you were overseas somewhere. I mentioned Mexico early, earlier, excuse me. So have a client, he's Mexican American. He has a house in San Diego. He has a house in Mexico. He's always going back and forth between the two of them. So he is driving to his house in Mexico and he gets pulled over by, for the police. And you know, some nonsense reason that you know, it was just a shakedown and goes up you know officer comes up to him and he says uh you know hey you were doing x y or z i don't even remember the driving violation but again it was a nonsense one and the guy says you know oh my gosh i'm so sorry officer i bet there's a fine to pay how do i pay that fine and the mexican police officer says well how much money do you have on you and he says six hundred dollars and he says well wouldn't you know the fine to get out of this is six hundred dollars so that guy had to give him 600 bucks. And then, oh, I, now I remember it. The, it was a, something was wrong with his license plate. And so the guy gives him the $600. And then he says to this Mexican police officer, hey, you know, I've still got this license plate issue. I just gave you all my cash, all $600. What if I get pulled over again? And the police officer says, wait in your car. I'll be right back. He says the cop comes back with a new license plate, takes off his old one, screws it in there and everything and says, this license plate will get you home, be fine, but you better throw it away once you get home. Don't use it again. Guy drives all the way home, no problems, no issues, and then throws away the license plate. I could tell you story after story of people getting a shakedown in Mexico, and usually it's gonna cost 20 to 100 bucks to get out of it. This guy gave him 600 bucks. Now, of course, I told him what you didn't do is you always keep your money in various places. So when you're carrying cash, you know, you obviously don't have all of it in your wallet. You might have some in a, a belt that goes inside the waistband in your pants. You might some have some on an ankle pouch. You're obviously gonna have some in your wallet. Um, you know, depending on where you are, you may duct tape some to your inner thigh. Again, it all depends on the threat of the location you're going to and you know how likely you are to get a shakedown. But if you're carrying a max of $600, don't ever tell them you have $600. You know, tell them you have 100 in a place that you can take out 100, not in a place where you're gonna take out $600 and be like, oh, let me just give you 100 of it. Now, when it comes to cash, I can tell you always, always, always carry cash. I realize most people use credit cards these days for almost everything, me included, but I always have cash for emergencies. If I'm here in the States and not somewhere dangerous, 
I'll just carry cash in a money clip. This is actually the CIA money clip that I bought at the, uh, the CIA gift shop that's in the headquarters building in Langley. Um, if I'm going overseas, obviously I'm not carrying cash like this and I'm not having my CIA money clip, but I usually carry, it's always a minimum of $300. That is a minimum, but I, I'll most likely have somewhere between five and a hundred, uh, five and a hundred thousand, 500 and a thousand dollars. And always, 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 I think right now I counted, I have something like 700 bucks on me, but always carry at least one $100 bill. No matter where you are in this world, if you stick a $100 bill in somebody's uh, face and say, hey, let me out your back door, or hey, give me a ride somewhere, it will work. Here in the US, it'll work, overseas it'll work. Because $100 will still get you a lot of things, even though it's not what it used to be, as in $100 with inflation isn't worth as much, but it still moves things. So I may or may not be able to confirm that I've used it to get a ride somewhere, or that I've used it. Maybe I needed to get out of a back door when I thought somebody's following me on a surveillance detection route or something like that. So have at least one $100 bill with you at all times. Anywhere you go, it'll get you out of serious jams. And I can tell you a story that wasn't a life and death situation or anything like that. But many years ago, my father and I were hiking. He loves to go hiking. Uh, so usually once a year, he and I try to do a big hiking trip. So on this particular year, it was his turn to plan it. You know, I just show up with my gear. I have no idea what we're doing. And so we go on this hiking route. We leave our car at one place. And if all goes well, we're supposed to go in some big loop and come back to our car. Well, long story short, there was supposedly the world's smallest sign that told us we were supposed to get off of this route. We both missed it. We ended up seven miles from where our vehicle was. After a very long day, we were exhausted. My dad is not in the world's best shape. So he sat down in the side of the road with all his stuff. It was a dirt road. I decided that I was gonna hike back to seven miles to the car, get there you know, sometime later at night, drive back and pick him up. I'm in the middle of nowhere. As I said, it's a dirt road. I'm hiking on this and actually it probably was only an hour in. So not that far in, I see this truck coming down the road. You know, I wave him down, I explain the situation. Hey, will you give me a ride? And he says something like, well, you know, it's, this is a rough road and you know, that's about five plus miles back. That's a long way. And I'm thinking, no kidding, buddy. I'm the one on foot. So in this case, I pulled out 20 bucks and said, hey, I'll give you 20 minutes it's, or $20. It's not gonna take that long. And he gave me a ride. I gave him 20 bucks, got back to the car. Now, the funny thing is, when I was bringing my cash for this hike, my dad jokingly said something like, what do you think we're gonna find at McDonald's? Why are you bringing cash? Because I always, always have cash on me because it's gotten me out of so many jams in life. Uh, just the other day, some woman, where were we? We were at some copy shop and it was 42 cents and they wouldn't take a credit card. I gave her a buck, right? But she was like, oh, I never carry cash. It was only a dollar, who cares, big deal. You know, it doesn't matter, but please carry cash on you. And maybe something as simple as getting copies and maybe getting a ride when you've missed your, your turn off on a hike, or you may be overseas bribing the police out of going to a foreign prison, which is not where you wanna go. Especially if you go to Mexico, please carry cash multiple locations. I know so many people who've been, uh, had a shakedown in Mexico. And if you go to Mexico, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So keep cash on you. Now you know how to bribe the police. If you want to know a few more spy secrets, make sure you go to blackbookofspysecrets.com. You're going to want to learn a whole bunch of spy stuff there that applies to the everyday American. Have a wonderful rest of the day and stay out of trouble.